invite you to take your seats. All except one person. <laughs> Elaine, wherever you're at, if you can come along down to the front. We've got a special moment, Sunny Hill. Yeah. Yes. It's testimony time. <laughs> and she's really excited. I don't know whether you could see that. Uh, she's so pumped. This is Elaine, Elaine Easterbrook. Been part of the Sunny Hill family for a long time now, Elaine. Do you know how long? Should we get this on? No, you're good. You're mic'd and ready to go. There we go. That's the sound of a mic that's ready okay. to go. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Right. Great. Right. Yeah. Oh, gosh, this is... Well, th um, thank you, Lou, for inviting me this morning to share. Yeah, um, yeah I am pretty nervous. This is not the sort of thing I do, so please bear with me if I... Um, I don't know if I mess up or if the words come out wrong. I don't know. But anyway, I'm in God's hands. So here goes. I have to put my glasses on. Oh dear. Anyway, um, yes. Yeah, so Lou's asked me to share my journey. And uh, last year in January, I started to feel quite unwell uh, to the point that I couldn't climb the stairs. My legs were feeling really heavy. And up to that point, I'd been quite a... Um, an active person, because my job is to look after children, so I'm always... Oh, your arm's going to ache for a long time. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, yeah, so I'm quite an active person, because my job is to look after children, and I've got a, quite a few grandchildren I'm always looking after, so yeah, I was quite a fit person. Until this um, illness had started. Um, so I went to the doctors, and they just thought it was a lack of vitamins that I was needed in my diet, so I went away and did what I was told, um, but things got worse um, to the point now where my hands and my feet were just constant pins and needles. There was parts of my foot where I couldn't put my feet down because it was like burning or like stepping out on hot stones basically. And there was this jabbing of knives continuously in my feet and honestly I was really in a lot of pain. So I just cried out to God basically. and. I just sat there crying and then suddenly God reminded me of this very old chorus, which I guess oh, maybe I won't know this one today, but it's called Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on me, melt me, mold me, fill me, use me, Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on me. And I was reminded of God's word in Isaiah 64, verse 8, yet you are our father, we are the clay, you are the potter, and we are the work of your hand. I realized then that God was going to do something, that he is the potter, and I am the clay, and he was going to mold me into something beautiful. And um, Yeah, I was excited, but at the same time, I also was quite scared, because I didn't know what was going to happen to me. Things got worse, and I was soon admitted to hospital. Um, by now, I was diagnosed with a... Um, a disorder which is called Chug Strauss syndrome, which is a rare disorder that affects the multiple organs, especially in your hands and your feet and your lungs and your liver and so on. And it affects around about 11 to 13 people um, per million, so that's how rare it is. So they started me on some chemo and some very high dose of steroids and a lot, a lot of painkillers but none of the painkillers could meet my pain. I was in agony. Some nights, I can remember now, just crying out in pain. I could not stand this, this constant jagging in my feet. So once again, God just came alongside me and he said, Elaine, find me in your pain. I thought, find you, find you in, my, in your pain? How do I do this, Lord? Please show me. And he did. He started to show me that to do that, I have to meditate on his word. Psalm 63, 6 to 8. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night because you have been my help. Therefore, in the shadows of your wings, I will rejoice. My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. And I also began to learn how to worship him through the pain, which I now know that this is the key factor in my healing process. I felt such a peace, and I knew that if I kept my mind on him, he would keep me in this perfect peace. God was doing a new thing in me. He was opening my eyes to his truth, 
and giving me a spirit of boldness to share God's love with the patients, with the nurses, and even the doctors. He was turning my weaknesses into his opportunities, and my part in this is to reflect his love, his glory, so that all men shall see God's light. I'll just tell you a few stories that happened to me while I was in the hospital there. There was a lady beside my bed who um, had lost her daughter uh, in COVID, and she hadn't yet been able to grieve. She just felt such a numbness. And um, as she was sharing this, I just felt God say to me, come on, Elaine, share, share, share his love. Share my love with her now. And I, honestly, I don't know where the words came from, but I knew it was God. And I was able just to minister to her at that moment. And I asked if I could pray with her. And as I started to pray, she started to sob. And I mean, really sob. And I was aware that the patients in the ward and, the, and even the nurses are looking to think, what is that woman doing to that woman there? I know she's causing her to cry. And I seemed just able to say, it's all right, she's grieving. But do you know what? As she was grieving, I just continued to just to pray over her. Now, I can't get out of bed because I couldn't walk by this, by this time. But I was just leaning across as best as I could to let her know that, you know, God loves her and he's here right now for her. But do you know what? God did a marvellous thing because in that time, the church chaplain, well, the hospital chaplain was about and he happened to be passing my way and he just came up to me and said, are you Elaine? I said, oh, I've come to pray with you. And I said, well, actually, I think this lady here needs you more than I do at the moment. And so he then was able to comfort her, which I couldn't do. And he, he was just then able to once again, share more um, about God's love and then obviously gave her the right contacts afterwards so she could be followed up. And I just thought, wow, God, that is you. That's not me. I mean, wow. And then another incident was um, a doctor was passing by, a lady doctor, and she came over and said, Elaine, how are you dealing with this diagnosis of this illness? And I said, well, actually, if I didn't have this God that I believe in, I've been in an awful state, I'll tell you now. And she was really intrigued in what I was saying, and she said, do you know what, I don't normally do this, but I'm going to wash and dress you this morning. And with that, she pulled the curtain round, and she said, tell me more. And I thought, wow. So I spent another hour or so just ministering God's love again, and she was just asking so many questions. I was so excited, and as, if, for those who don't know me, this is not me. I'm really not like this at all. And... But I tell you now, by the end of my time there, which was about five and a half weeks, I was reading the daily readings out to the whole ward. And there was, yeah, it's pretty great. And um, there was a lady in, in the, one of the beds, and she always used to shout across, Elaine, you haven't done the reading today, come on. And then I thought, okay, yeah, yeah, right. So I get out my book, and, and then I was able just to share and, and answer any questions if anyone had any questions. So I thought, wow, isn't that wonderful? So what now and where now? Well, I had a checkup two months ago, and it wasn't the, um, uh, it's not something I wanted to hear, but basically the rheumatologist said, I'm afraid, Elaine, your, your nerves are pretty much damaged, and so you won't get past the fact that you are still walking on hot stones or whatever. But um, all we can do for you now is to give you the medication to, um, keep the disease at bay. So, okay. So I came out of there thinking, God, um, have you not, have you, you can't possibly finish with me yet. There must be more. There must be more that you must need to be do, doing in me. And so I went home and I just prayed and God just gave me these few words. It's just simple enough saying, Elaine, I'm still in control. I am in control. And as I mulled that over, I thought, okay, God, you are still in control. This is not the end of my journey. And as I was texting Hannah just to let her know how I was getting on, I was texting these words, do you know what, Hannah? God is saying he's still in control. And as I was texting those exact words, honestly, my phone pinged, and right across the top there was uh, somebody had just texted me this, God is in control. And I thought, wow, God, thank you once again. Yeah, thank you, God, that you are confirming to me that you haven't left me, you're still in control. 
So today, instead of moaning about the number of tablets I have to take each day and night, I thank God for each one. I'm learning daily to commit my walk, my thoughts, my trust, my hope, my concerns and goals by learning to sit at his feet quietly, to be listening and to wait on him. God knows my desire and that is to be healed. But he also is showing me that don't let that desire of being healed become more important than the here and now and what God wants to do with me right now. Wow. So, if any of you out there are waiting for your miracle, then please look at where you are now and don't miss out on what God wants for you today. There are some days, yeah, are difficult. I've been honest. And I struggle to get going, but I know that God gives me his strength to face each day. Or in Isaiah 40, verse 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I thought, thank you, God. Thank you. Yes, yes, let's give him the honor and praise. Yeah. I love the fact that he has promised us, me, he will give me that strength for each day and to meet my trials in the here and now. And if I do all these things and if I learn from him what he's shown me so far, then I won't just survive, I will thrive. My story isn't finished this. This is the only chapter one. <laughs> and I know there's going to be a chapter two soon. And so I'm just waiting on him for that. Wow, I mean, oh, I feel like just so, I feel like I love Jesus more just listening to that. What an incredible testimony and what a grace you carry. And I've just been so amazed watching Elaine's journey throughout this that she's just so full of grace, just in bucket loads, in spade loads, in so much pain, and yet just so ready to testify to the goodness of God, to whoever hears her, phenomenal, amazing. We want to pray for you, thank you. Elaine. Uh, don't miss any other. I don't know whether you just have this real sense that we want to, we want to pray, we want to pray, we want to pray, because Sunny Hill, we are a church that believes that God heals completely. He heals wholly. Um, but he's also a God who uses that in between. He uses it and he ministers through it and he, and he speaks to us and he teaches us and he uses us and, he, and through it, like Elaine did today, we're just able to give God glory through the highs and the lows and everywhere in between when we're this side of the victory or, or still this side. And many of you probably are in that place today where you guys are waiting for your own miracles and I just want to let you know that there is prayer available for you after the service. We would love the opportunity to pray with you if you feel a bit of Elaine's story resonating in where you sit in the waiting place, which is just the most painful place. But God can do so much in that moment. But we want to pray. And so if you would stand, and like we did with Matt and Naomi, just as a, a kind of moment to, to show that you that you stand, that you agree, that you resonate, that you believe. And Kerry, do you want to come down and pray? Kerry, well, it's your mum. This is your mum. You can pray. Stand and pray with us as we pray for your mum. Don't worry, you're on the mic. And we're, uh, we're just going to pray. We're going to pray for Elaine's complete healing. Jesus. Jesus, you're a God who heals. We know you're a God who heals. When you set foot on this earth you healed and you healed a lot so lord god we know that you carry a compassion and a love for your people and i know lord god that you love elaine and i thank you jesus that you have used this season to minister to people that maybe would never have been ministered to had it not have been for elaine in that situation with those circumstances and so I thank you, and we glorify you, and we honor you for all that you've been able to do in and through Elaine as she sat in this place of sickness. But Jesus, God, we can't believe that that's where you want her to be forever. And so, Lord God, we pray right now that you would do a healing work in Elaine's body, that what this rheumatologist has said will not be Elaine's full life, God, that she won't be in pain, that it won't be like standing on hot rocks or knives or that she won't be in any pain, Lord God, but that actually those tablets that she is grateful for at the moment, she can cease to use one day because in, in and through you have you done a work in her body. 
God, you see the nerves, you know the damage, you know where they end and the, the brokenness of them and the frayed edges. Lord God, I pray right now that you who knitted Elaine together in her mother's womb, Lord God, would you re-knit those bits together that have been broken. Jesus, we pray in your Holy Spirit. We know that your Holy Spirit is here present. I can feel him. I know he's here. And Holy Spirit, we welcome you to complete the work that you have started. And would Elaine be well in your name and for your glory? Because she is a woman who testifies to your goodness. She will use this testimony to give glory to you and make more people come and know and believe in a God who loves and heals and who saves. For your glory, Jesus, we look to you. And we look to you in the in-between and pray your peace and pray your blessing and pray your closeness that she would just forever and always know that you are a God who loves and adores her. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you for sharing.